Welcome back. This is week 13, part 2. Like I said previously, there's not a lot of new information this week since we've already talked about these areas of reading, but I did want to give you a little bit more background on multisyllabic words. So let's talk a little bit about multisyllabic words. The reason this is important is because students who can read single syllable words often struggle with multisyllabic words. Phonics helps with single syllable words, but explicit instruction in recognizing syllables and morphemes is needed to help with multisyllabic words. Students fifth grade and up, aka your students, encounter words with mostly seven or more letters and two or more syllables. So as a result, we need to teach them how to work, decode, recognize those words. One way to do that is by noticing patterns. So pattern detection is an important word recognition function of the brain. This next bullet might remind you of read 514 and the different theories of reading. But what corresponds with patterns is that to read words in text fluently and accurately, the brain's orthographic processor needs to learn to recognize common letter patterns and word parts. So we want to build that fluency and automaticity in recognizing those common letter patterns and word parts. In multisyllabic words, this means recognizing syllables and affixes. According to Adams, skilled readers are able to automatically decompose multisyllabic words into smaller units based on the brain's memory of common letter patterns. So a little bit about syllables. Each syllable contains one vowel sound, but it can be represented with more than one vowel. According to Motes, knowing what a word means will help students come up with the pronunciation after the syllables are decoded. So we'll talk about this idea a little bit more next week in vocabulary, but this idea of vocabulary should precede some of the words they are reading in print. So the oral vocabulary will help support the production of words in print and in speech. So it's very important to expose students and kids to a variety of rich oral language so that way when they do decode a word they're able to adjust it because they have some familiarity or recognition of the word they've heard before and it's part of their vocabulary. So syllabication rules, there's some debate on whether or not to teach those. However, there are many different syllable types. So there's closed syllables, which end with a consonant. So in kitten, both of those syllables are closed. They have a short vowel sound and end with a consonant. There are open syllables, which have a long vowel sound, like O, pen. The O would be the long vowel. Also, repeat. The first in, uh, syllable in repeat is a open syllable. There are vowel combo syllables, which have short, long, or diphthong vowel sounds with a combination of vowels. So the example I could think of was daughter, with the first syllable being a combination. R controlled has the vowel plus R, so charter actually has two R controlled syllables. Vowel consonant E, so in parade, we have the uh, the raid part of that. And then consonant LE, so like in middle, the second syllable would be indicative of that type. So there are three approaches to teaching syllables. The first is to use syllable types and division principles. So essentially teaching students when, where, how to find the syllable junctures and then different syllable types, identifying those in order to determine the juncture so that you can pronounce and produce the word. Second would be identifying the affixes and word parts, so teaching students how to use root words and affixes in order to decode multisyllabic words. 
And then third would be to use flexible syllabication strategies. This is where they're just recognizing parts or chunks of a word and then decoding it, but you're not really providing explicit instruction in syllable types or in morphemes, affixes. It's more of just looking at chunks of words and decoding based on familiarity with those. More information on instruction. So teaching multisyllabic word reading should happen once the student has mastered single syllable words. So as you've used the core phonics survey, you've seen the very last part is the multisyllabic words. And it's important that you don't go there until the student is actually ready. So they need to be able to decode single syllable words before you tackle multisyllabic words. Assessment of multisyllabic word reading should begin in mid second grade, assuming that students are able to read one syllable words at that time. It is important to teach open and closed syllables, and you can do that using foldables. So if you have men and there's a fold between the E and the N, talking about how me is an open syllable, men is a closed syllable. Teaching syllable division strategies like vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, and how you divide between the two consonants, like in kitten. You could do dictation exercises where they spell one syllable at a time. And then you could also do syllable pattern sorts. So those are some different interventions you can provide and opportunities for practice with multisyllabic words. So, wow, this is quite possibly the shortest lecture in the history of Read 516. To launch you, I have a quote from Archer et al., 2003. They say, an emphasis on multisyllabic word reading is critical because of the number of novel words introduced in intermediate and secondary textbooks and the potential for failing to learn from the material if text can't be read. So... I thought this quote synthesized really why we should be going out and teaching students how to decode multisyllabic words with the expectations of Common Core, increasing text complexity, and exposing students to more informational text. It's more likely that they will be exposed to more intermediate and secondary textbooks with a lot of Tier 2 and Tier 3 vocabulary words that they may or may not be able to produce orally or recognize. So it's very important that we give them the tools to prepare them because ultimately when you get to those upper grades, you're having to read complex text and make sense of it on your own with very little intervention and instruction. And if they can't read it, they're not going to be able to learn from it. So that is my plead to you to be very mindful of patterns in your students' word recognition. And if you are noticing that they're struggling with multisyllabic words, which is not uncommon, to definitely give them some strategies to tackle those words, whether it be syllable rules, syllabication, morpheme analysis, Greek and Latin roots, whatever floats your boat, but definitely give them some tools so that they can learn how to learn from these materials. So. Have a great week, good luck with everything, and I will see you after our fall recess.